He says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost. The word communion is the same for fellowship. The same Greek word that's translated there for communion or fellowship is the same for partnership. So, you can read it and say the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the partnership of the Holy Ghost be with you. Praise the Lord. The partnership of the Holy Ghost. Why did Paul talk this way? Because of what Jesus said. St. John's Gospel chapter 14, and I am reading from verse 16. Have you found it? St. John chapter 14, from verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you. And shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now I said the other day that I will come to you. There doesn't refer to the second coming of Christ. Nor does it refer to the rapture of the church. He's talking about coming to us in the person of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will bring his presence to us. Now, maybe we should read it in context. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? Okay, from verse 18 again. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I leave, ye shall leave also. At that day, No, 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 stop first now. At that day, what day? The day when he comes to us. Ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. At that day, the day when he comes to us. Now in chapter 16, turn to chapter 16, same book. From verse 16. A little while and ye shall not see me. And again a little while and ye shall see me. Because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he said unto us a little while and ye shall not see me? And again a little while and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he said? A little while. We cannot tell what he said. Now, Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and he said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that? I said, A little while ye shall not see me, and again a little while ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because the hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. Uh, Hello? And I dare say, again, this is not having to do with the second coming. This has to do with the same thing he just said here. I'll come to you. Right, but let, let's go on here. In verse, verse 22. 22? Yeah. And now, no, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man take it from you. And in that day that I see you again, And your heart rejoices, in that day ye shall ask me nothing. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. He that will have ye ask nothing in my name, ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day, he shall ask in my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because he have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. Come on, say amen. amen. He's talking here on the subject of prayer. And we all know at the second coming we are not going to pray. When you get to heaven you have no need to pray. He said at that day you will not pray to me, but you will pray to the Father. Some wrong translations say, at that day you will not ask me any questions. Because he said, you will not ask. You will ask me nothing. But if you read it in the right context, it doesn't say you will not ask me a question. He said, you will not ask me in prayer. That's what he's talking about. Because in the, 16th, in the 26th verse, he said, I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. He's talking about prayer. He said, you do not need to pray to me, but you pray to the Father in my name. So we do not pray to Jesus. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Now, it wouldn't make any sense, any spiritual sense, to pray to Jesus in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, talk to me now. Am I right? Is it right to say, Oh Lord Jesus, I'm asking in Jesus' name. I know a lot of people say that, you know, because they don't listen to themselves when they pray. They just talk. Oh, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Jesus said you will not pray to me. He said you pray to the Father in my name. That day cannot be in heaven. Because when you get to heaven, you're not going to pray. So it's got to be on the earth. So how are you going to have this manifestation of Jesus? Through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the same 14th chapter, I'd like to read something to you here. From verse 20, 21. Um, no, no, let's read it again from verse 18 so you can catch it. From verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless, I'll come to you. Yet a little while in the world see at me no more, but ye see me, because I leave, ye shall leave also. At that day ye shall know that I mean my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. How are you going to know that? Through the Holy Ghost. Amen. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. That's exactly what he meant when he said, Yet a little while, and you will not see me. And a little while, and you see me. At that day, you shall not ask me anything. But you shall ask the Father in my name. Are you catching it? Praise the Lord. That I will manifest myself to him, the one who loves me. Alright. Judah said unto him, not Iscariot, another Judas, one of the disciples. Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So, now he explains this manifestation. Hallelujah. He says, If a man loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come and make our abode with him. We will come to live with him. How? How is the Father? And how is Jesus? Coming to live with you through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Through the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the communicator of the presence of the Father and the presence of the ascended Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Oh, this is good. So it tells us the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the partnership of the Holy Ghost be with you. 
We are in partnership with the Holy Ghost. Jesus said you cannot do the job alone. I'll not leave you without help. Or I'll not leave you comfortless. Or I'll not leave you helpless. I'll come to you. 16th verse, same chapter. And I pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. We already studied that and we said some very important things about the word another and the word comforter. And we said when he said another, he chose one of the two Greek words which can be translated another. One of them is heteros, meaning one of a different kind. The other one is alos, meaning one of the same kind. And Jesus chose the word alos, meaning one of the same kind. So when he talked of the Holy Ghost, he meant that the Holy Ghost was exactly like him. The Holy Ghost is exactly like Jesus. You know, some years ago, I heard somebody say that... Um, when the father speaks, he speaks with a big baritone voice. You know, his father. You know, so he talks to you with a big voice. Son. Because he's a big father. And then when Jesus talks, he talks like any one of us. Son. You know, when the Holy Ghost talks, he said, the, the, the Holy Ghost has a still small voice. Because a still small voice spoke to Elijah. So he says, Son. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I don't believe that. You know why? Because the Bible says that Jesus is the express image of the Father. So when Jesus speaks, it sounds like the Father's voice. Sounds exactly like the Father. Because he's the express image. In other words, you want to know what the Father is like, look at Jesus. You want to know how he sounds like? Look at Jesus. Listen to him. Hear his voice. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because I'm just like the Father. The Bible says he's the express image. He is the manifestation of the Father's person in human form. Come on. Hallelujah. So he talks like the Father. He acts like him. He does exactly like the Father. He said, I do what I see with my Father. But Jesus said. So we can agree that Jesus looks exactly like the Father. Come on, is that agreed? Alright, but now he says, I'll pray the Father and he shall give you another one of the same kind. Then he uses the word comforter. Greek paraclete. He said, Allos Paracletus, one that's called to go with you in partnership, communion, fellowship. Hallelujah. So, Jesus here declares he had been a comforter. He had been a paraclet, a comforter. He had gone with the disciples. He had been their helper. He had been their standby. He had been their strengthener. He had been their teacher. Their advocate. Their instructor, praise God. Hallelujah. Their counselor. And now he prays the Father to send another one that exactly like him. And in verse 17 it says, even the spirit of truth. The Holy Ghost is exactly like Jesus, who is exactly like the Father. So, the Holy Ghost is like the Father. Come on. True. So, he doesn't need to speak in a small, still small voice. He could, because, um, you know, one time, John, in the book of Revelation... He said he heard a voice that sounded like the voice of many waters. And he turned to see who it was. And he said it was Jesus. Well, the, the voice didn't actually say, I am Jesus. 
He said, I'm he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive again forevermore. So who is he that liveth and was dead? Jesus. But then he looked at him and the man's hair was as white as snow, like pure wool. But Jesus wasn't like that. But he's glorified. Can you say amen? Amen. He's glorified. So now he looks so beautiful. So, but who really was that? The Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost is the messenger of God. Understand this. He is the messenger of God. Jesus was the messenger of God for salvation, for redemption. Now, the Holy Ghost is the messenger of God, and this is His dispensation. And His job is to take the presence of the Father and the presence of Jesus to the world. So, we see Him in a vision. We see Jesus in a vision. Who is it? The Holy Ghost brings us the manifestation of Jesus. Because you see, the Holy Ghost, He is the only one of the Godhead, that means Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is the only one that assumes different forms at different times and can be in different places. At the same time. Or should I rather say, and would be, or should be, he's the one, he's got, that's his ministry. When Jesus is in this room, he will not at the same time be outside there. Are you hearing me? Because he is in the body of a man. He's got a man's body. And there is no man that can be here and be there at the same time. The Bible says Jesus Christ is a man. Come on. He's 100% man. He's 100% God. He is encased in the body of a man. So when he walked the streets, when he was in one street, he couldn't be in another. When he was in one city, he couldn't be in another. He was in the body of a man. So he was crucified. He died. And he was buried. And when he was buried, he was really dead. His body was dead. But you know, man's spirit never dies. You know that, don't you? Man's spirit never dies. So his spirit went to hell, to Hades. While his body was in the grave. When any man dies, the body may be buried. But the spirit leaves that dead body and goes to hell or goes to heaven. Depending on whose son he was. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you still here? Glory to God. I said glory to God. Lift your hands toward heaven just a moment. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Put your hands down. Don't ask me why. Hallelujah. All right, so his spirit went to hell. Jesus. He descended into hell. Why? One, he had our sins on him. Did you hear me? And so, he had to go to hell. Not as a sinner, but as the sin bearer. So he went to hell. But he wasn't paying for himself. He was paying for us. He was a king's man redeemer. 
Did you hear that? He was our king's man redeemer. He was... Did you ever study that subject? King's man redeemer? All right. Your... If a man sold his property and he died, his next of kin could redeem that property. And that king's man would come and say to the one who bought the property, legally he would come, he had the right. He would come and say, now, according to the law, there was a specific price. And so he would say, I am the king's man redeemer. I've come to redeem the property that was sold by maybe my father or whoever it was. And the one who bought it was under obligation to give it back. And the man would pay for it and take possession again. Now, Adam sold out to that devil. We had the king's man, Jesus. Glory to God. Who paid the price. And the price was death. Second death. He paid the price and redeemed us. Hallelujah. So he went to hell. And since he paid the price, Satan couldn't take a hold of him. The Bible says he led captive, captives in his train. Now, King James translation puts it this way. He led captivity captive. And I like that too. Praise the Lord. But in a sense, it gives you a good picture. I'll talk about that. See, so, on getting to hell, he had a combat with the cohorts of hell. Jesus did. He had a combat with the devil. The Bible says he threw off principalities. He threw off powers. As he grappled with Jesus. And struggled with him there. Hallelujah. Trying to hold him down. Trying to bind him. But they couldn't. Glory to God. This was battling the realm of the spirit. And of course, he knocked them down. The Bible says he triumphed over them. In that spiritual conflict that he had with them in hell. When he triumphed over them, he got the keys of hell and of death from Satan. Satan had the power of death. Satan had the keys of hell and death. And Jesus got the keys from Satan. Now listen, I'm not telling you a story, I'm talking about this book. Hallelujah, it's right in this book. Oh, glory to God. He got the keys of hell and of death from the devil. And then wait now, hell, that reigned at Hades, was divided into two parts. One part was Abraham's bosom. It was called Abraham's bosom, but they were still in prison. They were righteous men, and out of God's mercy... They could stay there. But they, were, they, they, they needed, they were looking forward to the redemption. And Satan had them there. But he couldn't punish them. Because of God's mercy. These were men that looked up to the Redeemer who was to come. They trusted the Redeemer. So they were in Hades. In Abraham's bosom. Called paradise. You remember when Jesus was on that cross, he said to the thief on the right hand, he said, Today you'd be with me in paradise. Praise God. But you know, <laughs> Jesus had to go first to that devil. To get through that place to Abraham's bosom. How do you know about Abraham's bosom? When Lazarus died, you remember Jesus said, A certain, he said, there was a certain rich man. It was not a parable. The, the story of the rich man and Lazarus. And poor Lazarus who died. It wasn't a parable. It was a real story. 
Jesus said there was a certain rich man. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't a parable. So, he said that the, the rich man died and the devil was carried him away. He went to hell. And, and the poor man died. Lazarus died. And he was taken into Abraham's bosom. But you see, he didn't go to Abraham's bosom because he was poor. Neither did the rich man go to hell because he was rich. It, it had nothing to do with being rich or being poor. Alright? It was because of the light they lived. But why did Jesus talk about the rich and then the poor? One going to hell and one going to um, Abraham's bosom. The reason was because he wanted the people to know it didn't matter how rich you were in this world. If you didn't have the life of God, you would go to hell. And that you need to prepare for the life hereafter. And then it didn't matter how poor you were. If you had the life of God, you would go to a good place. Alright? Glory to God. So that's what he was teaching. Alright. So, when he took the keys from the devil, he went to Hades and opened the cells. Abraham's bosom wasn't such a wonderful place. It was nice. It was the storehouse of the righteous departed spirits. <laughs> Hallelujah. And between the, two, between the two departments of hell, there was a great gulf. Nobody could go from here to there. Nobody could come from there to here. Only Jesus did. When he whipped the devil, he got the keys and then went through and opened Abraham's bosom and let them all out. Papa A.B. came out, glory to God. So did Noah and the rest of them. And then that, <laughs> glory, hallelujah, and then that thief came out too. See? So, when I came out with him, the Bible says he led captives in his train. Do you understand it now? They came out with him. So when Jesus came out of the grave, they came out too. According to the Bible, you can see that in the last chapter of the book of St. Matthew. They came out, and they appeared in the holy city. All that time, oh, do I like this. All that time that Jesus was waiting in the garden. You remember? When Mary came and she thought that he was the, the gardener, and, and she looked in the grave and there was nobody there. And she wondered, where have they taken the body to? And she was looking for Jesus, and she saw a man. Whom she thought was the gardener. Jesus was the one there, just waiting. What was he waiting for? Why hadn't he gone? All them folks that he brought out of Hades had gone into the holy city to see their great, 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 great grandkids. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was time to see the holy city. You know Abraham, he, the Bible says God made a promise to him, but he, shot, he couldn't enjoy it. He never actually entered that promised land. And this was the time. And he was there. The land flowing with milk and honey. Wonderful. This was God's promise. They had seen it come to pass. Now there were some others who were there too, righteous men. Job was there. A lot of them were there. They went into the city. The Bible says they appeared unto many in the city. Imagine you just walking, maybe walking in your garden or, or um, going a, a, along with your cattle and suddenly there's an appearance. Hello! This guy with long white beard just appears. You say, and say, no, come on! I just saw Jesus with the devil! <laughs> so, what happened? Jesus. And the man disappears. What do you do? You leave your water, you leave your hole, you leave everything and run back home. Guess what? Guess what? I saw Abraham! They came, are you crazy? <laughs> Nobody can believe you. Because, you know, when Abraham lived down here, you weren't even born. Your grandpa wasn't born. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, in the realm of the Spirit, there are no needs for introductions. When Moses and Elijah appeared on the holy mountain with Jesus, he didn't have to introduce them to Peter, James, and John. Peter just spoke up and said, Master! 
Let's build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. How did he know? In the spirit, we do recognize one another. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> All right. Well, well, see, the Holy Ghost was the one that raised up Jesus from the dead. And he's the one that manifests the presence, the presence. Of Jesus Christ. He's the one. So when he said, I am he that leaveth and was dead in the book of Revelation, in the first chapter. And behold, I'm alive again forever. Then he said, and I have the keys of hell and of death. And John fell down before him and worshipped. This Holy Spirit, Paul says, his partnership remain with you. Amen. His partnership. There is a partnership, a supernatural partnership that we have. Oh, glory to God. Turn the book of Zechariah. Now, 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 I got some of you. You were coming to church with your New Testament. <laughs> no, Zechariah. If you don't know where it is, turn to the table of contents. All right. Have you found it? Good. Zechariah. Oh, I I would love to read the whole chapter to you. But let's read from verse 6. We'll be all right. Chapter 4, verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, Hmm. All right, try to catch this. He answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Zerubbabel was the governor, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou? O great mountain, before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying grace, grace unto it. Who is the headstone? Jesus. Praise the Lord. But here's what I want you to see. He says, not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit. He had asked them to construct a temple. He had asked them to build that temple. And he said to them, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. He says, Who art thou, O great mountain? In the presence of Zerubbabel, you would become a plain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the greatness, the awesomeness of our partner. Hallelujah. It is by his spirit, saith the Lord. Yeah. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. I said amen. Amen. Look at chapter 15 of St. John's Gospel. I want to read to you verse 5. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Oh, 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 oh. This is most exciting. Listen. He says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. This perfectly illustrates... The kind of relationship that we have with Jesus. He says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. I I believe the vine and its branches will go by the same name. Come on. Secondly, I also believe that the vine and its branches will have the same life. Come on. The same life. The branches will bear 
the fruits. Hello? You want to know the beauty of the vine? You can only see the beauty from the branches. Because that's where you're going to see the leaves, and that's where you're going to see the flowers, and that's where you're going to finally see the fruits. That's where the beauty of the vine is. In the branches. Oh. Oh. Think about it. He says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. We are the fruit bearing part of the vine. That's, that's, that's number one. <coughs> that, that means the results of the vine will be found in the branches. Oh my goodness. The demonstration of the life of the vine will be found in the branches. Next, from the branches you're going to see all the fruits looking so beautiful. So the beauty is in us. The glo- in other words, we are, we are exactly what the Word says we are. We are the glory of God. We are the beauty of His holiness. Oh, Are you catching anything? Has he told you anything about you? Who are you? Oh, somebody says, well, I'm just a Christian, poor, wretched me, walking through the valleys of life. Doesn't matter how deep the valley is. I am the beauty of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I am the expression of His excellence. Come on. I'm not just giving me names. I I can derive this from what He said. He said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. The glory of the vine is found in the branches. That means He's chosen me to be the expression of His glory. Which means I have the same life in me. That Jesus has in him. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No wonder he gave me his spirit. Now look at that partnership. No wonder he gave me his spirit. So that I could actually function like him. He said it is not by might. It is not by power. But by my spirit said the Lord. So I find something wonderful. I am directly connected to the vine. Listen, I am directly, the branches are directly connected to the vine. You remember the other day I told you, you don't need to pray for power because God don't give no power. He's not going to give you power. You don't need Him to give you power. If you're plugged in, there is an eternal supply. Hallelujah! No need to pray for him to give you power. This is the connection. I cannot be detached from the power. I am rightly connected to the source. So no need to ask him for the power. This is the life flow. From the vine to the branches. And who takes care of this vine? The Father. He says, I am the vine. My Father is the vine dresser. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. No wonder Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. The anointing. The anointed one and his anointing that represents. Oh, glory. Come on, think about it. This is the reason. That anointing, he says, energizes me. He says, I can do all things. I can. There's a new mentality. There is no more an impossibility consciousness in your life. You suddenly rise up to discover you are a victor in life. Any day, any time, in any situation. He said, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 
more than conquerors. There's a new mentality. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. He is the vine. We are the branches. The glory of the vine is seen in us. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. What a life. What a life. You need to take another look at yourself. Did you hear me? This is God's mirror. You want to see you turn to this book and hear him say, I am the vine. You are the branches. Oh, God, thank you. Your life is in me. Hallelujah. Your power flows through me. Oh, glory. I am the offspring of eternal excellency. That's who I am. Not a child of chance. I'm not a child of chance. Born with a purpose. Think about it. Say, well, my father told me they didn't want to have another child, and then I suddenly came. So they they didn't plan for me, and uh, they told me I was a child by accident. (laughs) Well, if that's what you think, think again. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, and all things are become new. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even to those who believe in his name, who were born, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of the will of God. It says, not of blood. Not of blood. Being born again, not of blood. I said, not of blood. Oh, glory to God, not of blood. Can you say amen? Amen. Not of blood. This is the reason we cannot have HIV. This is the reason we can't have any blood infection. Because when we were in the world, we were subject to the powers of this world. But now being born again, not of blood, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Hallelujah. So he says, I'm born again, but I tested positive. Tested positive? Hello? Oh, somebody said the other day, well, my husband died of HIV, and I think I'm, I'm subject to the same problem. Are you born again, sister? If you're born again, happy are you? You don't need prayer. No, you don't need to go fast and pray for me. You don't need prayer. All you need is a word from your mouth. And say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I refuse to be subject to the powers of this world. I'm a child of God. I've been born again. I'm a new creation. Not of blood. Of the word incorruptible. Oh, how does that sound to you? Do these things sound like mere words? This is the reality of the world. It says to you, I am the vine. You are the branches. You are the branches. You are the branches. Hallelujah. You are the branches. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. John said, You have overcome them, little children. He didn't say, You shall overcome. I know I shall overcome. No, he didn't say you shall overcome. Because you shall not overcome if you have not overcome. (laughs) Hallelujah. No, you shall not overcome. He didn't say you shall overcome. He says you have overcome them, little children. For a reason. He says because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, this, this 
Holy Ghost. What is He doing? He is our teacher and our guide. He is the one leading us. The Bible says that we have received not the spirit of the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 12. Chapter 2 verse 12. It says we have received not the spirit of the world. But the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing things spiritual with spiritual. Can you say Amen. He says, he, He's come to show us the things that we have received freely from God. And that we speak these things in the words taught us by the Holy Ghost. So I walk with you in Patmos. Who's got the Amplified Translation? Anybody here? Amplified? Okay. Thank you. Oh, listen to this. Hallelujah. After reading this, if you don't have the Amplified Translation, you better get a copy. I hope the publishers remember me for this nice salesmanship. All right. Whoops. Listen. Hmm. For we are God's own handiwork. <laughs> Recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which He prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. I mean, the life is prearranged. We are just acting out what is already written. Can you say Amen. amen. Jesus said in the volume of the book, it is written of me. Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He said it's written. Every step Jesus took. A, a, a good and enlightened prophet of his day could just literally read his life as he went by. Hallelujah. It's been written already. I mean, the end of the whole thing is also here. We know how things are going to turn out. Some people say, well, we don't know the future. We don't know what's going to happen. It's written here. Your life is here from A to Z. It's all here. You want to have it? As God has said, you have to talk it. You have to talk it. I'm a new creation. I'm a success. I'm more than a conqueror because I'm an overcomer in this life. If you don't talk that way, you cannot have, listen, you cannot have the success that is written here for you. Everything in your life, everything for the good life and for godliness has been given to you. But the Bible says you can only approach them and walk in them through the light of this book. You know, it's the realm of the spirit. So we need spiritual light. I mean, anybody who's got no light will walk in darkness. If there's no light in the night time, you walk in the dark. So you call for the light. Hey, somebody, get me some light. So they put on the light, and then you can see. In the realm of the spirit also, there's darkness. But when the word of God shines, we can really see. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, this is nice. Let me read you another word. Say, we're living what? A prearranged life. Amen. I said, we're living a prearranged life. The Bible says, count it all joy. When you go through diverse tests, no matter what happens to you, says, count it all joy. Why? You're already a success. You can see the end from the beginning. And like God says, from ancient times, things not yet done. To God, things that be not as though they were. Let me read you this. First Peter. Did I tell you where I read from the first time? I read from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. I want to read from 1 Peter. Then I'll tell you the verse later. Hey, glory. Listen, listen, listen. Like they sing that song. Listen, listen. Pay close attention. For God has something to say. Alright, listen to this. But you are a chosen race. 
Oh, hallelujah. They talk about black race, white race, colored race. This is a chosen race. Can you say amen? You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! I'm special. So he says, well, you know, it's not as though I'm special, but uh, what are you talking about? You are not talking about an ordinary person. I'm special. The word of God says I'm special. So well, I can't find it in my translation. Go get this one. In the King James, it is a good word, peculiar. That means unique, one of a kind, no copy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased, special people. Listen, God's own purchased. Nobody's going to buy something of no value. I mean, when you want to buy something, you want to buy something real good. Think about God. He's top class, first class all the way. So when he wants to buy anything, you can be sure he'll go for first class. I'm first class. <laughs> Listen, these are not mere words, I'm telling you. I said I'm first class. Say it again. Uh, say it again and, and, and feel it in your stomach. <laughs> Go to the job. I'm first class all the way. Now, now, listen. You know, in your life, you're growing. You're moving. See first class only. And you're on your way. If you don't think you're there yet, you're on your way. You are first class only. You are on your way. Glory to God. You can start learning it now. How are you going to start learning it? When you go on the road, you want to buy a loaf of bread. Think again. Uh, 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 uh. Listen now. Listen. I'm tell- you got to practice it. Listen. 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 You're, you're practicing first class. Is that all right? Now, don't just stop by the road and buy that thing off the train. Are you hearing me? Leave that for the second class guy. Now, you first class, why don't you get into the shop better? All right? Is that all right? Now, don't you buy this, this, this roasted thing out on the way. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm talking about? Because you are first class. Can you say amen? Listen, it doesn't cost too much to get in the shop. Do you agree with me? It doesn't cost too much to sit somewhere and eat your food. You're not going to be biting it on our life. No, you are, you are first class. Amen. I said you are first class. Top class all the way. That's who you are. Oh, let's finish this. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priest to a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people that you may set forth. Oh, oh! See if I start shouting. I don't know. Listen, he says that you may set. He gives me the responsibility to set forth. Listen, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display. He uses the word display. Display the virtues. And perfections. I told you. He is the vine. We are the branches. And we are the ones that show his glory. That you may set forth the wonderful deeds. And display the virtues. And perfections. Of him who called you out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. It's my responsibility to set forth the wonderful deeds of God. Hallelujah. You want to know the works of God? Look at me. Amen. Display the virtues and perfections. Are you, are you catching this stuff? 
Next time you do something, do it right. Amen. Do it right. Get your ideas clear and do it right. Make it right. Perfect it. You can. Because it tells us that's our ministry. Do you understand that? That's our ministry. Now, now, don't say, I've just written it, but there's a, there's a little error, so uh, about, uh, I, I just thought, maybe, uh, maybe next time. Uh-huh. Now, you still got the time. Why don't you just correct it? Are you following what I'm saying? Maybe you're typing something that, 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 that there's an error there. Don't say, well, 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 let's just, till next time. Uh-huh. Just correct it right there. Are you, you see, you're learning perfecting things. Because we are the ones to show the perfection of our Heavenly Father. Can you say amen? amen? I like this. See, until you know that that ministry is yours, and that the Holy Ghost is your partner to see to it that it works, you will never think that way. But once you know, it's your ministry. It's an assignment given to you. And God will never ask you to do something that you cannot do. Now, He knew you could make mistakes. So he said, now I want the Holy Ghost to be with you. He'll help you. He'll teach you. He'll lead you. He'll instruct you. And he'll be When you run out of power, run out of strength, and you say, oh God, I can't. I, want to, I feel so sleepy. I just can't touch you. Some people say, I just can't read for up to one hour. The moment I open the book, I just start sleeping. The Bible says this God of Israel doesn't sleep and he doesn't slumber. Let him arise in you. Can you say amen? amen? Yes. Let him take over your eyes and the spirit of slumber eyes will get out of you. See, I'm always, I'm forever hungry. Always hungry. No matter how much I eat, I feel hungry all the time. I wish it would be so spiritually. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you hungry all the time? <laughs> no, what about for the word of God? For the word of God, yes. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Say I'm peculiar. I'm peculiar. He is the vine. We are the branches. We display his perfections. His life is in us. His life is in us. And we are first class all the way. Now if you're first class, get up now. I'm Prescott all the way. Oh, glory to God. 